it's quick, it's hot, and it's dirty. It's spaghetti alla puttanesca, and despite its unsavory name, it's an umami-packed pasta dish that you're gonna love. Welcome to Actually Italian. I'm Sal, and I'm on a mission to help you cook authentic regional Italian cuisine. This time we've got a time-honored Southern Italian traditional pasta dish, uh, basically from Naples, but you'll find this all over the South. The recipe itself has existed for centuries, but the name is relatively recent. It alludes to prostitutes, but nobody really knows where the name originated from. But let's forget about the name and let's just get right into the cooking. It's as fast as it gets, so let's get started right away. There's various ways to make this, but the base of puttanesca is this, the Italian secret weapon in so many dishes, anchovy. I like to call it Italian MSG because it's something that elevates the flavor of each dish. It's incredible how much it brings to each plate. So we're gonna, we're gonna make a paste out of it so that way it dissolves into the, the sauce. So we're just gonna simply run the blade over it, kind of like squishing it. So even if you don't like fish, this is like one of those ingredients that you really have to have in this. It doesn't even taste fishy. Doing it this way, it's gonna dissolve into the sauce. Like I said, you're not even gonna know it's there, but it's gonna add another level of flavor that just makes it the dish that it is. So I definitely suggest putting it in even if you're a little frightened of anchovy. This is under oil, it's salty, but it's not like super salty. And basically the rule of thumb is one anchovy per person essentially. So there, I just kind of made like a paste and we're gonna uh, set this aside and then we'll go through the rest of the ingredients. The next essential ingredient are capers. There are two versions of capers. There's salted, like these ones are, and then there are the ones in brine that are sort of like olives. I prefer using the salted. You can use either one. If you can't find salted, that's fine. These just need to be rinsed and they'll add a floral, element to the to the dish that you don't get from the the brined ones the last of the essentials is garlic you really have to have a lot of garlic in this one and i'm using fresh garlic here i wouldn't use the kind in a jar or you know already prepped so i'm just going to kind of give them a light squish we want to slice this up pretty thin the funny thing is Garlic isn't used in Italian cuisine nearly as much as, as most people think. In the south, where this dish originates from, they use a lot more garlic. So that's, that's why we'll see a lot of garlic in this one compared to other traditional Italian dishes. I'm just slicing it up really thin because we don't want to take any bites of chunks of garlic. So another optional element are the tomatoes. Some people don't use any tomato at all. I like to use fresh tomatoes when they're in season, which they're not right now. So I'm gonna use some canned whole tomatoes. These are little grape tomatoes, whole. They're gonna have a little bit of a sweeter flavor that's gonna work with the salty elements in this. You could use passata, you could use whole, big whole peeled tomatoes cut into chunks. Olives are another, to me, essential. Some people don't use olives, they'll just use capers, but I feel like it really needs olives. These are from Ligordia. You should use some Sicilian olives if you have them, or Gaeta olives from Naples. Um, Kalamata olives also work really well. You want them to be kind of oily and fruity and, and salty, so don't use those canned California pitted, you know, black olives. Use some good olives. This is a simple dish, so you want every ingredient to be as good as it can be. Then to really freshen it up and, and give it a garnish, we're gonna put in some fresh chopped parsley. This will brighten up the flavors because we've got a lot of salty elements in this, and it really needs something fresh to kind of brighten it up. This is like a, a pantry dump if you can call it that. Like all of these ingredients you should have in your well-stocked Italian pantry. Then you can make this dish really on a whim. Just it only takes a few minutes to put it together. We're gonna head over to the stove and start cooking. 
We're going to start with the pot of water because we want to get this going first since the sauce doesn't take much time to cook. I'm going to add some salt, not too much because this is a salty sauce so I'm putting a little bit less salt than I normally would. We're going to wait for this to come up to a boil and then we're going to put the pasta in right away and then get working on the sauce. Got the water up to a boil so now we're just going to dump the pasta in and we want to get it into the water as, as quickly as possible. This way we can give it a stir and it's not going to stick. You don't need to add any olive oil or anything like that to keep it from sticking. All you have to do is, is give it a few stirs once it gets into the water. Every couple of minutes give it a stir. So it should cook for 10 minutes according to the package, but we're going to take it out a minute from being al dente. While we're waiting for the water to boil, I'm going to start in a cold pan. I'm going to put the, the garlic in with some olive oil in a cold pan and then turn it on and put it on medium heat. The reason I'm starting in a cold pan is because this all is going to cook really fast. So I want the garlic to get absorbed into the oil without this getting burnt because burnt garlic is going to give it a bitter taste. At the same time, I'm going to put that anchovy paste in there and get that started. Now like I said this is going to melt so we just kind of get it incorporated into the, the oil a little bit but as things heat up this is going to start to break down. So this will take probably like two minutes before that gets going. Actually I can already hear the garlic starting to sizzle so we're already almost there. See how that anchovy just is starting to break apart? You're literally not even going to know it's in here. Alright, this is starting to really go now, so this is when I'm going to add the, the tomatoes. Just turn that heat down. Oh wow, that smell. So these tomatoes are going to break down too. Even though they're whole, I'm not even going to crush them because they're, they're essentially going to melt into this sauce. These really literally only need like three minutes to cook to, to take that kind of rawness out. If you're using bigger whole San Marzano tomatoes, then you're going to need to do this. You're going to need to give them a little more time because you want to cook that rawness out. So now we're going to add the olives, the drained capers, and that's it. That's literally the sauce. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn the heat off of this now and then we're just going to wait for the pasta. Now for the other Italian secret weapon, we're going to reserve some of this cooking liquid because this is going to make the sauce. It really is essential. And then we're going to strain it. This is about a minute from being cooked to al dente. So we'll put the pasta in the pan with this and the sauce and finish, it, finish cooking it that way. Now I switched pans because the other one is too small for putting the pasta in to toss it all together. Before I put the pasta water in, I'm going to add some crushed red pepper. If we put it in earlier, it would be really a lot spicier, which I love, but my wife doesn't love so much. Now we're going to add some of the parsley, just about half of it. We're going to garnish it with more later. And then we're going to add some of the pasta cooking liquid. So now I'm going to toss that pasta in here and all this liquid is going to start to turn creamy and get absorbed by the, the spaghetti and make it all nice and homogenous. We'll toss the pasta. Let's get a, a good stir. We want to get all of the pasta wet because it has to continue to absorb that sauce. Remember, it's not quite al dente yet. This still has just a little bit of a crunch to it. So probably 30 seconds actually. I don't even think we need a minute here because I, it did sit for a second before I got it in here. But you can see that there's not much of that liquid left. Remember it filled that whole pan and now there's just a little bit. So it's already getting absorbed. It's already getting thickened. And this is what we want. It's starchy and that's the, the reason why it's going to create like a, a nice thick kind of creamy sauce. All right, I think we're there. So I'm going to plate this up and then, then we're going to give it a taste. I already know this is going to be good because I can smell it. I can smell the garlic. I can smell the olives, the parsley. I'm going to dig in.
this just hits all those salty notes just right. It's like an explosion of flavor. Every bite has something different in it. And it is salty, but because I didn't salt the water too much, it's, it's balanced out. Though I did have this dish in Palermo once and I actually added some raisins to it to balance out the sweetness. In fact, I've also seen some places put pine nuts in it. So if, it, if you think it's gonna be a little too salty, you can do it Sicilian style and add some, some kind of sweet elements to it. You don't taste the anchovy. You taste something in there. It tastes better than it looks. And that's because of the anchovy. That's that Italian MSG. It elevates all of the flavors in the dish. Also, crucial step is cooking it in that water in the pan with the sauce to finish, to get it to al dente because it really absorbs all that flavor. So you can see this isn't really saucy. In fact, it, it almost looks a little bit dry, but it has all that flavor in every bite because we cooked it all together. Anyway, I hope that you make this dish. I hope, first of all, that you stock your pantry with all of these ingredients. It's essential if you're gonna cook Italian food to have these things ready to go. Then you just whip it all up together and you've got an awesome pasta dish. I'm gonna keep eating, so I'll see you in the next video.